Hi, everyone, and welcome to the final episode of Real Life Talks. I'm your host, Yvonne Heath, author of the book, Love Your Life to Death, and founder of the I Just Showed Up movement. So for the first time, I don't have a guest today. <laughs> I am the guest because this is my final episode, and I want to just share just looking back, reminiscing all the incredible guests I've had and share a little bit about my mission and what I will be doing moving forward. So as I was looking through all the incredible guests that I have had on this show, over 85 shows, I have to say I'm pretty proud of that <laughs> because when I started um, my mission, I had 27 years of nursing, and then in 2015, I left my nursing career, realizing that we are a society that is very ill-prepared for grief, transitions, and end of life, and I wanted to create change. And in that time, I, I, when I decided to write a book, I sent out one email, and I said, I want to share people's stories, people's stories of being in the deep trenches of grief how they got through to the other side, professionals, anyone working in this, and what has helped them to create joy in their lives again after trauma, tragedies, transitions, whatever they had gone through. And I said, will anyone share their stories? I didn't even think people would respond. And I have to say I was overwhelmed with the incredible people who were willing to be vulnerable, and share their most personal stories. And in my book, Love Your Life to Death, which is right here, I shared people's stories ages 11 to 101. And it truly changed my life. They were so inspiring. And I realized that it is in sharing our stories that we heal ourselves and each other. So that transitioned into a TV show, television, and, and being able to continue sharing stories. And I have to say that these last few years with my show Real Life Talks has changed my life and impacted probably more people than I'll ever know because I was able to share stories from just the most incredible people who made the decision to change their, take their painful experience and turn it into passion and purpose and make a positive impact in the world. And truly, I believe that no matter what we have been through, that is how we heal. So just thinking back and sharing a few people and few, few of the guests I've had, I think back to, I've had Michelle Empson on the show more than once. And Michelle is um, a woman who has a lived transgender experience. You know, it really shone the light into the experience when you um, grow up and you are not comfortable in your skin and, and you feel different and um, the, the lack of acceptance of yourself and other people not accepting you and the difference when you can truly become who you were meant to be. And I have to say that I have been friends with Michelle for many years and she is just the most incredible, loving, giving human. And I was grateful to her for sharing her painful story and her new beginning and how she is absolutely devoted to changing stigma and acceptance of everyone. So thank you, Michelle. And then I had Alison Babette. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with Allison. Allison is an advocate and she is the change and she is out there sharing her story of someone with developmental disabilities who will not allow that to define her. And she even, there's a song called I Am Able. And Allison has continued to be that voice for change. And you know, what we focus on is what we are able to do our abilities, not our disabilities. And again, what an impact and showing us what is possible in the world. Then of course, my friend, my beautiful friend, Eva Olson. Eva, who it is 2021, has just turned 97 
97 years old, or she would say 97 years young. <laughs> Eva is just the most incredible person who survived a challenging a childhood and then survived the incredible horrors of the Holocaust, where her family was murdered, everyone but one sister. And she survived because she made a decision that she was not going to die there and she needed to take care of her sister. And after she did survive the Holocaust and later in life also had other tragedies in, in her life. And she was also silent about the Holocaust for 50 years. At age 71, she chose, she was asked to speak at her grandchildren's, at a grandchild's school about her experience and she never looked back. From age 71 to 97, she has shared her story of tolerance and acceptance and inclusion and just being grateful for what you have in your life and for just accepting all people. Even in these times in the pandemic when she could no longer travel all over and speak to millions of people in person, she got on Zoom and she has continued to speak to schools everywhere on Zoom at age 97. So for those of you who say, oh, I'm too old to, to Zoom, mm -mm. you can ask Eva how to do it. <laughs> Incredible. So these are some of the stories that just inspired me. And, you know, part of my mission in this life is to help people navigate through life transitions and end of life with heart and humor, no matter what we are going through. And what these beautiful guests and sharing their stories, they validated my message of, you know, sometimes we feel like we need to figure out, well, how do I help this person? They're going through this, or this person's going through something different. And what about this per person over here, these marginalized community members who deserve so much better? And what I realized is the answer is always just show up just show up. In fact, that's what I spoke in my TEDx talk. And when I show my bracelet, that is the I just showed up movement. The I just showed up movement teaches people of all ages how to just show up for themselves and others. So they are empowered and resilient when grief arrives. And they are able to just show up for others. And when you talk about just showing up for others, do you know the things that have made a difference on people's hardest day and um, when they are grieving, supporting someone who is dying, having a child with addictions, whatever it is, acknowledging and allowing their feelings, listening to their story without judgment, just being present, being there to help with life's daily tasks. A hug, text, email, call, sit silently, walk the dog, cut the grass, shovel. These are all the things that make a difference when someone is in crisis, grieving whatever they are facing. And these beautiful guests that I have had and I've shared their stories, this is what they have done. They've just shown up for themselves. They've just shown up for others. They've listened. They've shared their stories so that people know that they are not alone in this world. And this is truly what we need more than anything. We need connection. We need to get back to that strong sense of community. As my guest, Pete Bombachi, who sees that we are very isolated in our world, certainly, especially even more challenging in the pandemic, but he created the GenWell project and, and shared with people how important it is to make those connections however you can, to reach out to people. You know, you, have, you may have a, a neighbor who is elderly living on their own and you think, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Well, as Pete says, you can just, I say, just show up for just one more, just one more. Having a cup of tea 
with that person who may be isolated otherwise, even if you have to be six feet apart in this pandemic, which is as we are still navigating, that can make the difference. That can make the difference. And the more we each take responsibility and say, what can I do today to just show up for just one more? I will tell you what it does. <laughs> it can make the difference for that person. And I always tell people, I am a do-gooder and I go out of my way to do nice things for people sometimes. Why? <laughs> Not because I'm a wonderful person, <laughs> because it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel better. Even if I'm grieving, if I'm in a crisis, if I'm struggling, sometimes I will just pause and take a break and I will go and do something kind for someone else. Their gratitude and appreciation makes my day. And you know, here's the thing is that this is something we can teach people of all ages. Children know how to just show up. We just need to allow them more. We need to allow them the space to just show up. In thinking back a few more guests, some of the stories have been incredibly just heartwarming and heart-wrenching. I think of my dear friend, John Westhaver, who at the age of 18 was in a horrific car accident and was burned almost like 90% of his body and was clinging to life. And in that horrific accident, three of his friends died. I imagine that at age 18, you know, if he just gave up and was never a happy person again, no one would blame him. Talk about tremendous grief, many surgeries and visible scars from these burns and his friends dying. No one would ever blame him for not recovering, for being a negative, sad person for his whole life. That's not what John chose. John chose to be a light in this world. He talks about um, road safety and he encourages people. He's, he's spoken to other burn victims to say, you know what? You can have a wonderful life no matter what. And he even says, I know I look good. <laughs> you cannot help but love John. You cannot, you, you, you see past the scars. You say, yes, you have scars and you're such a wonderful human. I want to be your friend. And guess what? John went on. So not only is he a keynote speaker and changing other lives, he is married and has three beautiful children. <laughs> if that doesn't inspire you, no matter what you've been through, and show you that whatever grief, tragedy, whatever you've been through in your life, you can create joy again. I don't know what will, because that truly touched my heart. And so as my message also is heart and humor, because it's already serious enough, isn't it? I also had the incredible privilege to interview, to have a conversation with my mentor from afar, someone that I've admired for many, many years, Dr. Patch Adams. And I don't know if you can see this collage in the background here. So Dr. Patch Adams, there was a movie made uh, based on a portion of his life where Robin Williams, who lives in my heart forever, he starred as Patch and showed how Patch went to visit children in cancer wards and, and people who were suffering and dying and dressed as a clown and brought humor to them. And, you know, so many times when we think someone is going through a crisis or they're at end of life, oh, it's very serious and I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. Isn't it already serious enough? And when you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say, just show up with heart and humor. Humor 
it just think about it. Imagine, you know, you're, you're really struggling or facing end of life or the dying loved one and you hear laughter or joy or someone's dressed silly. It doesn't take much, but it makes such a difference. And since that movie, which was um, released, I think, in 1998, Patch has gone around the world and he has done over 300 clown trips in many different countries. He's visited orphanages, war-torn countries, people who were just facing the most devastating circumstances. He has been at the bedside of more than 10,000 dying people. Yes, dressed as a clown. He's been dressing as a clown for the last 50 years. <laughs> It's so incredible and inspiring because it's already serious enough, isn't it? So I would encourage you, first of all, watch the show and just think when, you know, someone is suffering and you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, just show up. Let your heart lead the way. And when people say it's uncomfortable, say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is uncomfortable. Imagine what it's like for them. Remember, it's not about you. Just show up, acknowledge and allow your humanness. It's okay to not get it right. Maybe you won't get it right. Maybe you will say something that isn't great and you just say, geez, sorry I said that. I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, we we're so hard on ourselves. And here's the thing that I aspire to change is that we talk about plan and prepare for grief and life's challenges before they arrive. So that when, not if, when grief arrives, when we are struggling, maybe we do know maybe something that we could do or say, right? We understand what just showing up means and that we could do that for each other and accept, yeah, <laughs> this might be uncomfortable. I'm going to just show up anyway. So when you think, should I make that call? Make that call. I don't know what to do. Well, you can go to their house and, you know, rake the yard. Say, I rake the yard in memory of your dad. I know you're going through a hard time. I'm, I rake the yard because I care. I don't know what to say, but I'm here. We are too hard on ourselves and we complicate things. And so I encourage you to say, what could I do? ahead of time, what could I do to prepare myself? Because here's the hard truth, you know, the elephant in the room, the fact that life is unpredictable. And I say, prepare for anything. Change is the only constant. You know, you can have a wonderful life plan. Suddenly you're going sideways. You didn't plan on going that way. But life is like that. The hard truth, we don't all die of old age. We don't always get a warning. So I encourage you, think about what do you believe about life and death? Do you understand grief? What does grief mean? So many people think that we only grieve and you know we're sad when somebody dies. Well, truthfully, grief is something we experience throughout life. We can't protect children from grief, but we can learn with them. And I define grief as our mental, physical, and emotional reaction to loss, transitions, and change. It's experienced in whatever makes our heartache. Divorce, diagnosis, job loss, addictions, mental health issues, whatever it may be. And as you've learned with some of the guests that I've shared, they have been through tremendous grief and they allowed their hard, sad feelings. And they know there is no timeline for grief, which actually brings me to having Ken Ross, Ken Ross, an incredible, the incredible son of Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and the founder of the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross Foundation. So Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is well known for a book she wrote, which over 50 years ago called On Death and Dying. And in it, she had conversations with dying people and she talked about stages of grief that she had witnessed 
And you know, the world went with these stages of grief. They just took them and they ran with them. They said, oh, there are five stages of grief. No matter what you're grieving, you go through these five stages. And I think that we just kind of wanted to go through them and then they were over. That is not what Elizabeth what intended her conversation and, and talking about stages was to help people understand that these are some of the things I've observed and to help us see that grief is not linear. You know, it's kind of a roller coaster and it's different for everyone. You may experience some of those stages or not stages, but have some of those experience or an array of many other emotions. Elizabeth went on to write 23 or four more books and did so much other tremendous work in the world and never even talked about the stages again. So I need people to understand when you are grieving, you can acknowledge and allow your emotions. We all grieve differently. There is no timeline. And I encourage people to think about that. You could have a grief attack. 10 years down the road, just thinking about something that happened many, many years ago. And imagine if we all understood that if we just showed up and we just said, hey, looks like you're having a hard time today. Here's a coffee. I'll, I'll answer your phone for you. Or do you want to take a walk? And just created space for that, right? Knowing we can have a grief attack anytime. There's no getting over grief. So please, we don't have to ever tell someone to get over grief. There's no right or wrong way to grieve. Only if you're hurting yourself or someone else. And so I encourage everyone, watch some of these incredible episodes, learn from these beautiful people. There are just so many more that I interviewed and I am just so grateful and beyond proud to have shared their stories and their wisdom and their inspiration. It truly touched my heart and this has been such a privilege. And so when I, and every show I started and I said, I am uh, the author of the book, Love Your Life to Death, which is also our website where we have lots and lots of resources. I always share, shared that I have the I Just Showed Up bracelet and it doesn't say just show up. It says, I just showed up because I want to lead by example. And it even has a little card here. And the card reminds me, because I'm human too. <laughs> I'm just learning as I go along. So it reminds me that if I want to be able to just show up for others, I have to just show up for myself first. Or if there's a situation that's uncomfortable, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I should call. I'll look at my brace and say, right, I'm going to call. I'm going to just show up. And I give bracelets to others to make a difference. And at the end of the show, I always encourage people, and I will share again, but I, I said, always bring your own tambourine to the party. <laughs> and I love sharing that because when I talk about just showing up for yourself first, that means having coping skills, strategies, talking about planning and preparing for grief, transitions, and end of life before it arrives, Checking in with yourself, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And so I have a self-care toolbox. And I encourage everyone to, help, to have a self-care toolbox. And in it, things that will help you navigate through your grief. I have many things in there, people I can call, um, funny little things like my Patch Adams nose and you know things to remind me that I can be humorous even when... I, I can laugh and cry because grief and joy coexist. It's never one or the other, right? It's a roller coaster and we have to learn how to hang on through the dips and curves. But in my self-care toolbox, I do have a tambourine. And my tambourine reminds me that I am in charge of making my own music. Some of the funnest things I've done is I've been on many stages playing the tambourine with bands. You see, I would see that they would have a band or a tambourine on the stage and I would take it and start playing, <laughs> playing the tambourine. Not usually invited, but I certainly had a good time. And then one time I went and the band said, oh, sorry, Yvonne, we don't have a tambourine today. And I said, that's okay. I brought my own. <laughs> so my tambourine reminds me to bring lightheartedness 
into my life to check in with myself. I am in charge of making my own music. I am in charge of my own happiness. We cannot make other people happy. We cannot make other people angry. That That is their choice. We always have a choice. We don't always have the choice we wish we had, but we always have a choice in what we do with what we've been handed. So I thank my beautiful guests from the bottom of my heart for choosing to be inspirational despite the enormous heartache and heartbreak they have experienced and did again and chose again and chose and chose to continue to being a light. I encourage each and every one of you to really think about these things. How can you be better prepared for grief transitions and end of life? You're welcome to connect with us anytime at loveyourlifetodeath.com and reach out, normalize these conversations. And when you do have these conversations, remember to include children. We don't have to be strong for everyone. We have to grieve together and learn together. Me and my friend, Anne-Marie Schrouder, who I've just recently had on the show for the second time, who wrote a book called Being Brown in a Black and White World, where we all want to be the change we want to see in the world, where we all have value, we all matter, and the world is safe for everyone. So thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in. I am so grateful. Thank you to my amazing producer, assistant producer, and everyone. It has been an extraordinary journey. And as always, if you want to be able to just show up for yourself, if you want to be able to just show up for others, my call to action, as always, plan your life, plan your death, and then just love your life to death. And always bring your own tambourine to the party. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you.